more than likely, they've skipped one major step is a team sport. And they haven't built a team that can help them spread their message, whatever it might be, or their product or their service. They have to have an agreement with a minimum of six individuals. It's almost like having a contract where these individuals at different times during the day will, to match time zones, will send out a message about Rima and what Rima is doing or whatever, whoever we're talking about. It's, you can't do this alone. You can't do this alone. I don't care what we're doing. You know, so like I have art day. You know, it takes a lot to have a successful life. You really have to pay a lot of attention and really be mindful of how you're creating your life and your business. And today we are so lucky to have with us Patrick Carney, the artist, who has been a very successful artist for many decades. Patty, Patrick, welcome. I call him Patty. So if you hear me, Patty, it's going to slip out because we've been friends for a while. Welcome. Thank you very much. I'm absolutely thrilled to be here. It's always a pleasure to hang out with you and to um, have the unique discussions that we uh, are blessed to have. We definitely have lots of great discussions. <laughs> I would love to actually launch us off. You've been running a mastermind for over 40 years, and you have guests that attend pretty much for free to come and teach and be part of the mastermind. How have you been able to do that? And when I say guests, I mean some incredible individuals that are very well known that have tremendous followings or business or a variety of things. How did you accomplish that? Well, number one, it's through relationship building. Mm -hmm. It's creating win-win. It's giving each of us an opportunity to have an impact on the world. And one of the things I learned, and I wish I would have learned it in high school, is that, uh, you know, on Saturday night, the pretty girl didn't get invited out because all of us guys were in fear of asking or whatever it might have been at that time. And so I learned that we have to ask because the answer is the same if we don't ask. So um, when I meet someone at an event or someone that I've read their books or I attend their uh, seminars or whatever it might be, I attempt to create an opportunity for that win-win. And once I've created that opportunity, that relationship, I can ask. And so you always have to have your ask in gear. Mm. And uh, currently, we have invited 183 different speakers. And 180 have shown up. That's really incredible. Yeah. That you've built that kind of a relationship that they would show up and invest their time and energy into a variety of individuals. Yeah. It, you know, it's 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 good to learn from trees, I think. Mm. Because you learn to learn to be grounded and rooted so we can stand strong through any storm. And I believe that's what every individual who has ever spoke at Mastermind, no matter what they're speaking about, shows us that they have built phenomenal roots in their communities, in the in the world and in the universe overall so that they can have that impact and they themselves can live through whatever is thrown at them. You touched on something of having your ask in gear. Would you elaborate on that? And can you jump into a conversation with someone that 
you don't have for a relationship or no, can you have an ask? Well, having your asking gear is is knowing what you personally need, what the ind individual that you're going to interact with, what is their expertise, so that when you ask, you know, they're typically willing then to 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 answer in a positive way. However, you asked, should, could we just do that when we meet the person first thing? No, you have to build that relationship. It's called scorch, scorched earth networking. When you do not have that relationship and you burn the opportunity to build the relationship. That's quite right and amazing that you're saying it and I love the way that you're saying it because I remember when I was running my networking groups I would see a lot of individuals that instead of investing the time and energy into building a relationship they would immediately have an ask or throw something at someone and that person is completely taken back instead of reacting in a positive way that they really do have something to offer somebody else. So it's interesting. Yeah, and you know, I call them takers. You know, they're att attempting to take before they actually uh, build any kind of relationship. You know, I, I, I can remember over the years going to a, you know, a business card exchange at the chamber or something. And, and um, it was always similar occupations that attended these things and they would all, you know, throw their business card in your face, uh, you know, thinking that was doing, that was networking. And uh, it's so far from the truth that uh, <laughs> I, I stopped going. Now I'm going to take it in a different direction. You've been an artist for multiple decades and you're, very successful by many people's standards of running a business, running a life, and having incredible connections and people that you have painted. Can you take us through that journey? Because there's so many wonderful creative artists out there that really struggle. What is your wisdom for them? Well, they, they, they struggle because from an education standpoint they're not trained to have a business aspect to being an artist and that's not intuitive to us you know we're we're very right-brained so it's not intuitive to to learn how to sell or how to run a business or whatever it might be how to get a loan how what all the different aspects of of, of building a business from scratch so the first thing they need to do, because they've already got the talent, you know, the talent's there to draw, to paint, whatever it might be that they're doing. So the, the, the deal is to um, get a mentor, really, or a multiple mentors that um, can lead them through the process of actually being an entrepreneur, you know, and at the same time, if if they learn that they're not good at it, they have to hire somebody that is good at it, you know, um, and, and well, that's expensive. It's expensive not to do it. Very expensive not to do it, yeah. especially when you're seeking to grow. How did you foster the growth that you have created for you because you've done the Beatles you've done some great names well I lucked out early in my career uh, it was a Sunday night or Sunday afternoon actually in um, Harrisburg Pennsylvania and Harrisburg is a, is a, a small city in the middle of Pennsylvania Dutch 
um, community where, you know, horse and buggy and everything and farms and, um, and painting what I did, which was rock and roll stars portraits. I didn't sell a lot in Harrisburg. However, I had to do that show to be able to do Philadelphia and to do Pittsburgh on the tour that we did. And so this gentleman stopped by and he said his name was Charlie. And we sat for an hour and, and just chatted. And he, he was fascinated by the fact that I was doing what I did and that I could, you know, make a living at what I was doing. And um, at the end of the conversation, he, he said, what are you doing tonight? And I said, well, actually, we're breaking down. And tomorrow morning, I'm driving out to Pittsburgh for a two week show in Pittsburgh. And he said, when was the last time you had a home cooked meal? And I said, it's been a couple of weeks. And he said, well, why don't you come home and have dinner with us? And so I did. And uh, it wasn't until after dinner that I learned out learned that his name was Charlie Tremendous Jones. And when he told me that, I had no clue who that was, you know, no, no clue. And it turned out that uh, Tremendous was a nickname. And uh, that nickname was in all of the titles of his books. Books are tremendous. Life is tremendous. All, you know, and and he would squeal when he said tremendous. I wish I could squeal like it. It was, it was just extraordinary. And, you know, he turned out to be one of the top transformational speaker leaders of, of the day. And uh, so after dinner, he took me out to his converted barn. And he gave me my first copy of Think and Grow Rich. And he mentored me through each chapter. Uh, I was to call him every Sunday night after my shows closed. And we would go over for about an hour um, each chapter. And so that was my first training in really how to be an entrepreneur, how to be a business owner, how to take the art in a direction where we could make money at it. Curiosity. I hear a lot of artists that are struggling and creative in general that go through these very hard emotions that take them on roads that they don't desire. You're extremely creative, obviously. Did you ever experience that? And and if you did, what did you do to work your way through it? You see, whatever is on our minds, we attract. So if I heard it once, I heard it a thousand times in my life. If you become an artist, you're going to starve. So that's drilled into you as a youngster. Okay. And even, even my high school counselor said the same thing. He said, go enlist in the army, go serve in Vietnam. Um, you'll never make it as an artist. And so society, in my opinion, gets in the way of all of the creatives. It doesn't matter what we're talking about, whether you're a painter or, or you're a dancer or you're a sculptor or you're a musician or you're a singer songwriter, whatever it is, doesn't matter. It's all, we as a society here in the United States don't support the arts the way it should be. It's, you know, like here in San Diego, it's like a secret society. It's crazy. It's not like New York or Philly. And um, so you got to work through that. And you got to work on yourself to get all that negativity that society's put in there to be successful, you know? And so the negativity's in your work. And you got to mm -hmm. get through that. And that's one of the reasons that I started to have impact or create impact through words that I put into the art before I started. Like you, you have a sign behind you that says "Stay positive." Mm -hmm. I, I might do a, you know, might do a portrait of you with the word "Stay positive" embedded into the portrait. So you actually start with the words in the portrait. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
and you find that that actually helps your art to be what you are desiring it to be? Correct. Yes. It, it puts me in a mindset of, of um, who the person is. So like when I'm doing the, the, the rock stars, I'm putting lyrics mm. behind and, and um, I've had individuals almost quote verbatim what's on the canvas. Uh, actually, you brought to my mind, you do something that is so unique and so neat. You really honor the various artists. I see that on your social media posts where you actually give the reader a little synopsis of them and you honor them. And you do that so well. Was that intentional or how did you even go that route? Well, in my opinion, music and the lyrics actually help us to live a phenomenal life. It can be the the actual lyrics to 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 our lives. You know, and whatever song it is that you pick, and you, you and I've talked about it before, whatever song that, that we're listening to that has that impact, it doesn't matter when we hear it again, we're going to go right back to that phenomenal, you know, and, and there's no greater gift than joy. And so we're getting that gratitude, that joy, that happiness out of the lyrics that uh, that were written and, and the song put out. But you've gone the steps of honoring the person. Like well, that's really... because what I'm saying is, is because of that, mm, mm. I have to honor the these individuals because they've, they've impacted my life. They've changed my life. They've created this joy within my life, this gift that, that I have to honor. And see, that, that actually started um when I was an art student when I, I was taking the train to New York City and so I had an hour it was an hour ride and uh, so I would s sit opposite someone that had a very unique face male female older younger whatever it might be and I would draw them on that hour ride to the city and then I would drop the drawing on their lap as I left oh. and it would say, call me. And I'd have my phone number and I had 100% calls with a married, older, younger, whatever it might be, single. And all I'd say to them was, I just am honoring you for who you are. And thanks for the opportunity. That's what I'd say on the phone. And it's just carried through everything I do. I just, um, I was just in Ireland uh, recently and uh, walked into a jewelry store. And this guy said, wow, I, I, I love your aura. And I said, thank you. And he said, what year were you born? And I told him and he, he went racing into the back of the jewelry store and came racing back out with a coin of original Irish money that's not used anymore for my birthday. And, he, and, and and gave it to me, right? <laughs> um, so I had to honor him. So two days ago, I sent him a portrait of him that I did from that day. Well, I can and only so, imagine his response. Oh, he was thrilled because it. Now, the cool thing is, he had a fourteen-year-old son who is into the arts. And so I got to mentor the 14 year old during this process. Mm. And because of him getting the piece, and he, he said it inspired him because he used to, when the, when his 14 year old was younger, they used to draw together. And so yesterday they were back drawing together. I've heard you mention so many times that you're mentoring in young individuals all over the world, what, what allows you, what makes you take that step 
to invest your time and energy into someone else? I think it's a sin if I don't. Because I was gifted the opportunity and the ability to draw or paint. And it's my obligation as a human being to pass it forward. Beautifully said. Now you touched on your travels to Ireland. I would love to know what you came out, what you came back with in your heart and your soul from traveling from the States to there and back. The, the, the joy and the happiness of the people were, had the biggest impact on me because of, you know, I, I, I had to think about what, what's the secret because of what's going on here mm -hmm. and the challenge of, of being here in America. And, and over the last week, I've, uh, I've, I've thought about, about it all. And Ireland is, is quite a peaceful place to live. It's a very unique country and, and, um, they get along with all their neighboring countries and their rate of violence is, is, is way down. And, um, they don't have to actually worry about natural uh, disasters like we have going on here. And, um, there's one word that can describe how Americans are feeling right now. And, it, and it's called bad, you know, um, for whatever reason, any sense of optimism that was apparent a few years ago, um, Americans are not pleased or happy with it, their current lives, their their daily lives, the, the state of the nation, and of course, the, the state of the politics. Um, there's a, I, I read a poll recently, and don't quote me, it's, you know, however, it was around only 38% 38, 38 of Americans are satisfied or happy. 38%. Um, and twice as many Americans in that poll um, report uh, loneliness, that they're lonely, than, than 2018. And 45% um, said they lack companionship and something like another 30 something percent 37 percent i think it was um feel left out so we we as human beings have to change that we have to get involved with each other we have to talk to each other we have to interact in a way that allows us to not confront because of beliefs and and that's the biggest thing i think i took out of out of the trip i mean i enjoyed every ounce of it the the parties the uh, the wedding and um the interaction with individuals i mean think about this I couldn't find a restaurant. Kind of lost. I was in the temple district. It was dark. It was night, cold. And uh, I see a young, a young, he's probably 70, guy walking towards me. And um, I said, are, are, are you local? And he says, yes, lad, I'm, I'm, I'm local. And I said, do you know where O'Brien's is? And he said, oh, yes, I know right where it is. Da, da, da. And eight blocks later, walking me to this restaurant, and introduced me to the maitre d' and said he was, I was his best friend and I was get a good seat. Uh, I mean, think about that. That wouldn't happen here. It doesn't happen here. You know, it's, it's, it's kind of wonderful. And, and so, so, so I was thinking about it. I was thinking, wow, you know, um, I don't know who needs to hear this. Losing people 
who treat you poorly isn't actually a loss. So I'm kind of cleaning out, you know, getting rid of people that, that, that disrespect human beings. I was at an event yesterday, which was all about kindness because it happened to have been kindness day, but this event was happening. And I think the most beautiful part that I saw in that is the person that was running it along with a whole bunch of volunteers that took the time and the opportunity to honor so many individuals with a lot of individuals from all over the States and overseas and I think what I grabbed out of it the most is how needed is our way of expressing to someone else that they genuinely matter and yes getting rid of negativity and paying attention within yourself that if you're being negative and in this event it just happens to be that I would say from the people I talked to and sat with a good 90%, 95% were more on the positive side. And you still have a few that don't even notice, even at a kindness event, that they're not showing up in the best of way for themselves and others. And I'm I'm constantly working on that, as you well know, to like allow someone to be aware of how they show up, to be mindful of who they are. And that's why I gravitate so much toward you in the way that, yes, you're an artist, but you have a way of honoring people. And I asked you this question again. I'm going to ask it again. How did you come to that awareness? It's probably uh, from my upbringing, my mother. Um, she honored everybody that came into her life. And mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I don't know any other way to be, you know. And it, there was something that happened at the wedding at the church that was just wonderful. And, it, and, it, and I thought, oh, my God, we got to do this in America. Uh, right in the middle of the ceremony. Um, the priest comes to the front of the altar and he says, and he's talking, you know, how family sit on either side. So Kean's family was on the right side and, and the Carney the Corbett family was sitting on the left side. And he, he talks to the Irish side, the Kean side. And he goes, I would like to let you know, there's about a hundred Americans sitting on the other side of the t the aisle here. And I would like you all to stand up, walk across the aisle, and introduce yourself to all of the other Americans on the other side. Give them each a hug and tell them welcome to Ireland. Wow. And for about 20 minutes, this went on. Everybody hugging each other and saying who they were and where, you know, that kind of thing. And it went through the whole church. It was extraordinary. We need, a, that's what we need. You know, not, not a table networking thing or whatever. The whole group needs to meet the whole group. And, you know, I mean, and, and these weren't two second or four second hugs they were 20 and 30 second hugs so that you feel the endorphins kick in this was extraordinary oh talk about the length of the hug because some people don't even understand that part yeah you know like you know the hugs that you see on the street at two second three seconds it, it doesn't do anything for us it really doesn't enhance who we are and 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 create the opportunity for a connection. So a minimum hug has to be 20 seconds. Minimum. And it should be longer. And, you know, so many people are uncomfortable. And you can feel them pulling away long before any 
successful relationship can start. I remember when I first walked into your mastermind and you asked people to hug. I am from a hugging family. So to me, that was norm. And I noticed how it all of a sudden connects the room yeah. so much better. You do it up front and at the end of the meeting. And you've kept that tradition even when you took them on Zoom. Yeah. And I yeah. see their reaction when we have guests or you have guests and you go, okay, give a hug. Yeah. <laughs> and I could see their reaction, but it actually does make a gigantic difference. Yeah, you, you, you know. What 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 happens is is we we need to be inspired by another individual's soul. And one of the things we train when we meet in the mastermind in person is how to hug so that the hearts meet up in the hug. And that you should have the desire for a piece of my heart to end in your heart as as we do this hug. And uh, it changes lives. Now, it's very interesting because over the years, we've had individuals that don't participate. Mm. They, they just, it's not in them especially male to male or, or whatever it might be. And, and um, you can see it in their eyes because the soul speaks louder with the eyes than the words. And so um, you can see the, the fear or apprehension or whatever it might be in their eyes. And because and, as you say, you walked in, it was unexpected. And so if a guest comes and they're not, you know, instructed of what's going to happen uh, can be a, quite a shock. Patty, I'd like to know what is your take on genuinely moving people towards kindness, towards being more present? Because you do a lot of training on a variety of things and people wouldn't know that they see you as the artist. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah I, I keep all that a secret. Yeah. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> um, at the end of the day, you have to ask yourself a question. And that question is, have I done my best today to to change the world for the better and if you can't say yes there's something wrong because my goal each and every day is to impact six new lives by 6 p.m well how do we do that you know um Sometimes it's in person, sometimes it's social media, sometimes it's in a mastermind, sometimes it's at a seminar, whatever it might be. Um, this happened recently. I, I uh, was at uh, a program called Secret Knock a couple of weeks ago. And uh, a guy came up to me and he said, I have to thank you. I said, oh, thank you. What What, what are you thanking me for? He says, well... Six years ago, you walked into a bathroom and I was leaning up the, against the wall and I felt like I didn't belong. And you said to me that the universe doesn't make any mistakes. So you're supposed to be here. You're supposed to be mingling with these high achievers and you're supposed to learn from them for you going to the next 
on your next step of your journey. That's all I said. I don't remember it. Don't even remember, you know, don't remember the interaction or anything. And he's thanking me for this. And he's one of the most successful people in the world today. Isn't that tremendous? <laughs> it is. I get, you know, and it, it's for me, it's just second nature. You know, I saw him. He was struggling. You know, it's like being in high school and, you know, the wallflower sitting by herself at, at the lunch table. I would always sit down next to her. Because, you know, we 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 as human beings have no clue what the other person's going through. We don't know their struggles. We don't know what what's happening each and every day. We don't know what's going on at home. We don't know if they're eating three three meals a day or or there's abuse at whatever it is. So when we see, that's why there there needs to be eye contact. When we see in their eyes that there's a challenge, and that's what I saw in this guy. There was a challenge in his eyes. Interact. Okay. It takes zero, zero dollars to be a great human being. Ooh. You're talking my language. <laughs> yeah. Especially in the arena of feeling less than because I touched on it a little bit earlier for creative individuals. And I happen to work with a lot of wonderful young creative individuals and that ugly monster of feeling less than always put, bulges out in the wrong timing. What advice would you give them? If I put you in front of them, what would you say to them? I talk about the vibration that I feel from them. The power. The intelligence. The beauty. The very essence of their soul. And since I know who you're talking about, I have interactions with them as well, because you blessed me with the opportunity to give them a couple of art lessons. And society is to blame. It's not those kids. And I say kids, they're, you know, they're, <laughs> they're adults making a living in, 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 in the arts. And, um, I'd let them know that the angels surround them with a divine presence and are guiding them through life and that the angels know without a doubt how much talent they have. And that's why the angels are there. When I address them, I also attempt to bring them to the realization that they're a walking tower of energy. And that that energy is seen way ahead of any words, of anything else. And they have the ability to give out that energy and also receive some great energy if they're willing to pay attention and be mindful of it and i know you and i have talked about this a lot for a variety of individuals whether they're entrepreneurs or in business of some kind but especially for our nation today each of us is a walking tower of energy would you elaborate and talk about that? Well, one of the things I learned over the years is the law of precession. 
it's one of the you know the laws of the universe like law of attraction etc that many of us have heard about the, the 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 law of precession tells us that our true purpose what we are put here on the earth to do always happens at 90 degrees it's like the butterfly effect when these young individuals are filming or they're on stage or they're an actor or whatever it is they're doing they're sending out that wonderful intellectual beauty that they possess at 90 degrees around the universe so it's impacting each and every individual around the world if they will listen or they will feel or be mindful and to, for those who have never heard of precession, it's easiest to tell you this way. Think of a honeybee nest. And the queen in the middle of the honeybee nest says to the workers, go out and get us nectar and feed the queens and, and the other workers that stay in the nest. And out goes the worker bee and goes and picks up nectar. Now, you would think, oh, that's its true purpose, to feed the honeybee nest. Eh, wrong. Its true purpose actually is to pollinate and create food for the universe. If the, honey, if the bees leave, we're done. We're done. So the true purpose of the bee is to pollinate. And it happens at 90 degrees. So when, the easiest way to visualize that is walk to the edge of a lake with a big rock and drop that rock in the lake. And what happens? Ripples. And the ripples go out at 90 degrees. When we're sitting here speaking, you and I talking about what we're talking about today, the ripples are going out at 90 degrees to create mindfulness around the world. For people to listen to this and Maybe, just maybe, have an impact and change what they're doing. Let them think about something different. And so when, to, when we're going through what we're doing, that's how you and I and other individuals have impact. Because if you turn towards, let's say, you know, like a like brand new business kicked off and it's doing well and they're making some money. Favorite four letter word, cash. <laughs> right. And they turn towards the money. It's exactly why companies go out of business within the first five years of being in business. They buy the BMW or the Mercedes and, you know, they'll buy the big house and all those kind of things. And that's not what this is all about. You're not rich if you have all the money in the world and you're unhappy. And that is not... rich. That is rich. And I hope that they really get it and hear it. Um. I'm going to ask you one other thing for a lot of the wonderful young individuals or the people that are looking to make an impact in today's world. And they're just frustrated. You and I have talked about it because of so much that's going on in our world today, but they're looking to make an impact. And I see them getting upset. I see them getting frustrated what would you suggest to them? And I'm asking you as the artist, because you have so much control over the way that you draw your art and the way that you show up so that you can actually put out a piece of art. You're completely present and mindful. What would you suggest to the individuals that are frustrated, attempting to control what's happening around them? More than likely, they've skipped one major step. 
Life is a team sport. And they haven't built a team that can help them spread their message, whatever it might be, or their product or their service. They have to have an agreement with a minimum of six individuals. It's almost like having a contract where these individuals at different times during the day will, to match time zones, will send out a message about Rima and what Rima is doing or whatever, whoever we're talking about. It's life. You can't do this alone. You can't do this alone. I don't care what we're doing. You know, so like I have art day. What's art day? Art day is where another creative soul spends time with me all day, whether they're a poet or they're a writer or they're um, another artist or whatever it is that they do. We sit in the same studio, creating at the same time, inspiring each other. You can't sit in an office or at home or whatever it might be alone and really, really succeed at the level you desire to succeed and have the impact that you, you have to have these um, core groups of individuals that work with you. And another one would be your educational group, your mentors, individuals that have gone through what you've gone through. Maybe they're retired. Maybe they're still in business. And they mentor you through it, which is why I mentor those artists that you talked about earlier. Um, and and another one is your support group. And one of those individuals should have the ability to write you a check for 20000 no questions asked, to help you over a hump. That's in your support group. And... Um, Every day, I probably send out now, I don't know, maybe 20 to 25 emails to people in my life, an article that I just read that might help them, a seminar that's coming up, an educational piece that I, whatever it is. And it, it typically they'll, you know, write back or call me and say, oh, this was perfect. This was perfect timing. You know, I needed this now. How did you know? Well, that's that vibration of precession coming around the world that, you know, that little intuition came through and said, oh, Rima needs to hear from me today. And this is what Rima needs to hear. And so I send it, you know, and you and I text or whatever it might be. And and you've you've said that to me a number of times. Oh, that was perfect. I need to hear that today, whatever it is. And and so. Anyone that is struggling typically has not built that, has not brought that into their lives. They're they're wearing too many hats, you know, and attempting to do it as a lone wolf. And you can't sustain that. I don't care who you are. That's wisdom right there. Can't do it alone. And that's really a key of building anything that's worthwhile is allowing others to come into your vision, your power. Nobody's taking anything from anybody. Everybody is there to contribute in whatever way is possible. And that's the beauty of the mastermind. And that's the beauty of a lot of the things that we have done. I'd love to know through your art, what's been your favorite relationship that you have built of someone that you have drawn is there one that stands out i i guess it's somebody we lost a couple of years ago um neil innes who is part was part of monday python he was uh john lennon in the ruddles um he was in um a couple of great bands that were, were phenomenal. Um, we had a similar sense of humor. We had a similar um, belief in the arts. 
and we could get in contact with each other at, at a moment's notice and, and lift each other up when, when, when we needed to. And, uh, you know, those are the kind of people that uh, I cherish. You actually do a joke of the day or joke club, and you've sent those to me several times. Did you foster that on purpose? You mean the inner jogging club? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, yes. It, it, it was a friend of mine and I um, were, you know, laughing over something. I forget what it was now. It's, it's like 50, 40 years ago or whatever it was. And um, she said, we should do this more often. And I said something like joking, you know, we should form a club. And um, her, light, her eyes lit up. And and so right then and there, there was a club, the inner jogging club. And what that means is that when you wake up the next morning and your ribs hurt so bad because you laughed all night, that you're inner jogging, you're doing exercises on the inner um, and uh, it's worked out quite well. It's worked out quite well. Is there anything else that you do for yourself that keeps you motivated, that keeps you alive, that you feel like these are the pieces of being an artist that really make a difference? Being creative makes a difference. It's It's the feedback that I get. Um, I get tons, tons of feedback and it's individuals saying, wow, uh, that, that just hit me in my soul or that just hit me in the heart. And it might not even be, you know, it could be so somebody else's lyrics attached to my painting and, um, it's just perfect for that day. And so people send those kind of things to me all the time. And um, I write them down, you know, uh, I save them if, if, you know, if it's impacting me as well, when they, when they answer um, it's uh, it's a pleasure to know that one little piece of art, made that kind of difference you know um it it's just what what happens you know during the day it's it, it, it's quite lively and quite act you know i love the action of it how have you softened through the years or have you oh yeah you know i, I was a true pain in the ass new yorker um growing up uh, you, you know, you do have this attitude, for lack of a better word. And um, as you meet individuals who transform you, impact you, um, elevate you, um, educate you, um, things happen. And, of course, um, I moved out of New York and lived in Pennsylvania for 25 years in an artist colony. And that had a huge impact. And now here, being living where we live, um, you know, so close to Encinitas, where, you know, it's kind of the center of the transformational leadership groups is right here in Southern California. So so um, that has really um, had a huge, huge impact to, you know, sit and talk uh, knee to knee with uh, a lot of these individuals, you know, um, and talk about the similar things we're talking about, you know, how to have that impact, what, what should we do? And the great thing is, you know, you and I've talked about this a number of times, the bigger they are, the more access we have to them. And everyone out there thinks it's the reverse. And so, you know, like one of my great friends is a guy named Dave Corbin. And Dave is the mentor to the mentors. When the mentors are struggling, they call Dave. Okay. And if I have an individual that's struggling, like our friend Johanna, 
I called Dave up one day. He said, listen, a friend of mine's struggling. Can I bring her by? And spent two hours knee to knee. And he gave her um, some startling uh, great ideas. And, and look at her now. You know, so that's that has impact that that we can sit with those kind of individuals and and uh, and those are the same individuals, obviously, for you and I to know um, that come and speak at Mastermind. I would love to know how being a grandparent has altered you, <laughs> and if it did actually. Um, the definition of happiness is my grandchild's laughter. Um, that, that softened me. Uh, I had made a, a deal with myself. I had made a, a contract with myself when, when I was a, a, a child. Uh, I only knew one, one of my grandparents, uh, grandfathers, um, uh, my other my paternal grandparents had passed before I, I was born. Uh, and and my grandfather, I loved him dearly. He was just old school. I mean, old school. And he n had no idea how to in interact with us kids, especially six of us at the same time. No idea. And uh, I made a deal with myself at that time that, that I was going to be a full-blown, on-the-floor, into everything interactive grandfather from day one and i have been and you know when we got off the plane from ireland and they saw us for the first time in, in five weeks it was you know brought tears to my eyes because they were so excited you know they scream papa and and you know they can't wait to uh, to get their hugs. They can't wait to um, draw. And, and you know, um, one of my greatest joys is is uh, they they all ask, "Can we draw?" And we go into the, uh, their art room and we'll draw for an hour, two, three, whatever it might be, and and create. And um, as I know, the arts impact the math and the scientists and the scientists. And so it's important that we interact like that with our kids. And so many parents don't, and the schools are eradicating the arts. And so there's a real problem in the United States. You know, we as a nation are down to 38th in the world in education. We used to be number one. Now, I don't ever really know if we were really, really number one around the world. However, let's just say we were one. Now we're 38th because we're destroying this country through the education system. And that's a gigantic topic that we could spend multiple hours on. And we, <laughs> you and I have <laughs> spoken on that yeah. individually. Yeah. Yeah. I'd love for you to like, you touched on it, to share how do you invest time really with your grandkids? Because I don't think people truly understand what a difference it makes to that child. I don't necessarily talk to them. I listen. Mm -hmm. And that makes all the difference. You know? Uh, if they ask me a question, of course I'll answer. You know, and they do. However, most of the time they are talking. They're sharing their dreams. They're sharing what they like to do. They're dancing. They're singing. Whatever it is. And I give them 200% of my attention to whatever it is they're doing. And um, they they appreciate that. You know, it's, it's important that we listen. So many people push the kids aside and don't listen to them. And if you do that, it 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 percolates over time and th they feel they're not important. When I'm there, they're number one. And they know it. 
And that's how we have to treat our kids. Don't label them. Don't, you know, whatever it might be. It's, it's, it, it's helping them grow into the human beings that they need to be. You've actually even invested time with your granddaughter sitting in her playhouse for multiple hours. Yeah, well, <laughs> you know, she was she was having a tea party and she had a desire for Papa to be there. So, yeah, why not? Uh, it's it's uh, it's it's fun. I mean, it really is fun. Um, and, and you know what it does for for me and and other human beings if they if they are mindful of what's going on it really really shows us what's important we forget sometimes because we get into the everyday ness of being adults and for this period of time i get to be a kid again i get to giggle and laugh and you know, tell they 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 ask me all the time to tell certain stories. There's the motorcycle story, and there's uh, Puff the Maggot Dragon, and all these different stories that I get to tell. And so I change voices and change, you know, how how I'll even change the story, and they'll they'll tell me, you changed the story. <laughs> That's not how it happened, <laughs> that kind of thing, uh, and and that's the fun of it. And it shows you that they genuinely are listening. Oh, they they're are watching. Listening. They're paying attention, whether we're paying attention or not. They are. Oh yeah, I you know I've gone into Mia's uh, um, salon. I've had my nails done. I've had my lips done. You know my uh, high, highlighter and all sorts of things and. And um, I've had as many stickers that could be stickers put on my face as could be, you know, those kind of things. I went to um, Chase's soccer game with left hand red and right right hand green uh, nails, uh, you know, because I'd been to the salon, you know. <laughs> and Mia asked if I would wear them to the soccer game. Well, no problem. I can wear them to the soccer game. <laughs> I love that you show up 100% for them, as well as make them feel that they're so important and valuable. I saw one of your posts recently about paying attention to the small things. Would you talk about that? Yeah, you know, we can get lost in this world. It, like this, very is if if we're if we're in fear or thinking about the bigger picture. So the small things, whatever it might be, a walk down the block, or for me, a walk in the lagoon, or you know, picking up a pen to draw, um, or writing a note to someone. It's nothing like getting a piece of mail from someone to to a small thing for us to do and the impact is like huge it's um take the time to give someone a call because you know if you if 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 it, if it comes across and says call sally or call pete or whatever it might be you need to do it then you can't wait because what if something happens and you were going to be the difference maker? You know, um, it's a regret sometimes that, that we don't make that call and somebody passes on or whatever it might be. So that small little thing will have huge impacts. You know, it's just like our friend Sparky handing out those ribbons. What a small little thing to do. Just a ribbon. It saved thousands and thousands and thousands of lives from suicide. It's changed lives. It's allowed people to grow into better human beings. 
And so that's why I concentrate on on the precious moment of being in the moment. We missed if we if you know smell as you know that that old saying, smell the roses. Well, yes. Take that time, you know, and never, ever, ever stop telling the individuals in your life that you love them. What does it take? A second? Two mm-hmm. seconds? Whatever it might be. It's just like what I was saying earlier. Zero dollars to be a great human being. Is there anything that you'd like to say? that I haven't asked you so that we don't get off this podcast and go, <laughs> I wish we might ask me that today. <laughs> well, uh, probably let's end it with when individuals start spreading acts of kindness, they start to open hearts with joy. Patty, so, I love you. Love you too. Spread the joy. And I thank you. And to our incredible viewers and listeners, I hope you took a lot of nuggets from today's podcast, as well as paying attention that your attitude determines your altitude in life. And we're all capable of taking care of our attitude so we could have a better humanity and a much kinder one. Patrick, thank you. Love you, babe. Love you too.